So this is the Falcon 9 rocket launching mm -hmm. the... What's the... Is it just a SpaceX capsule or... It's a capsule. Dragon capsule. Dragon capsule. Thank you. Uh, and there's another launch scheduled soon, right? Yes. Well, I know that they have been doing testing at their new... Um, uh, no, not, not another SpaceX launch, but another company. Yeah. I believe it's Orbital Sciences. Ah, uh, that sounds right. Yeah. And the whole point... This, this is the cool thing about this is that it's basically saying NASA can now take a step back and do what NASA does well, which is create science. entirely new science yeah. uh, and, and go to Mars and go to the moon and, and you know explore space and asteroids and, and the more mundane stuff of resupply uh, and, and satellite launching can, have, can be taken over by private industry. And that's, to me, the way this should work. Well, yeah, and, and even to drill down further on that, uh, they, there's now fixed pricing. You know, uh, and that tends not to be the case when you build stuff through a government program. That right. There's a lot of uh, elements to that that don't exist in the private sector, including, you know, just how you get that sort of funding approved. This is um, Falcon Launch Control at T minus 15 is minutes, Andrew on? 20 seconds and counting. No. All systems He's not on. Go. Okay. The SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket exhaling gaseous oxygen. Space the exhaling. Fueled with RP-1 propellant, a rocket-grade kerosene. So I think this is the NASA uh, feed the that you're hearing. Nine Merlin engines and lift the Falcon rocket off the launch pad at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. Hey, buddy, uh, you want to get on Skype so we can bring you on? Space Station. We're about two minutes away from a readiness poll. 14 minutes? That's not a straw poll for you chat room people. You can't affect the launch. Positions at the SpaceX Launch Control Center. All right. The call to a go or no go for launch. JJ, I can't right. actually mirror right. my display on this right. on this graphics card. The weather remains green. Ryan's going to be five minutes. Did you say Andrew came on? T minus 14 okay. minutes, 24. Can we turn that down a little bit? Yeah. This is Falcon Launch Thank you. Control. Uh, Brian is running a little bit late. He'll be here in five minutes. Spacecraft controller, you're clear to switch to internal power. Copy. So, I mean, that that to me is is the biggest element of this is that you can put, you know, now NASA doesn't have to look at sending up, you know, a project as a from scratch kind of thing. Right. They can. There's now there's the concept of off the rack rocketry mm -hmm. exists. Yeah. Uh, and that's what this is, and. Here we go. There's the man in the dead of night. <laughs> see my smile? Uh, <laughs> I think I see you, Andrew Main. Now, this yeah. is the most mysterious episode of Weird Things Yet. <laughs> Are you in the rocket? Like let me switch. I have two cameras here, so let me try the other camera here. This launch is not rated for men. Get out of the capsule. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that is awesome. That sounds awesome. Wow. <laughs> That's insane. So right now, and I don't know where we're going to cut in with the episode itself, but uh, we are close to 12 minutes away from launch. Uh, so far, Andrew, uh, from the ground, uh, the weather looks good. Uh, we we're seeing that it is, it's favorable for launch, but uh, from, from where you are, uh, how would you describe the weather? The, we the weather's good. You know what I'd like to do is let me switch over to my iPhone. Let me call, call me back, but I'll pick up on my iPhone because we'll get a much better image. Okay. okay, good. Good. Boy, just hearing that announcement, like in the background there. Is, this sounds awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. It's kind of <laughs> chilling. Really jealous. I would love to be out there. Oh, man. Now, I Jammer B, they were saying the SpaceX feed has different angles than the NASA feed, so I don't know if we want to check that. Might be a little better. After you get Andrew back, of course. Um, yeah, so, you know, this is, uh, you know, it, it, it's very, very interesting to kind of look at SpaceX as a company and, and, you know, understand it even as not only groundbreaking and what it's going to hopefully will do tonight, but also the first of many. And, and, you know, that the idea that this isn't just a monolithic kind of thing, like we've looked at space travel uh, in terms of competition amongst governments that, you know, like, well, the United States is doing this and, and Russia is doing this and China is doing this. Now there's just 
kind of infinite possibilities in terms of if you, you know, we we're going to have, uh, you know, a company that designed their own rockets from scratch that uh, have really done this from the ground up. And it can start to become mundane the way air travel has become mundane. Air travel itself is incredibly complicated. Yeah. But we've gotten good enough at it. Uh, that multiple companies can do it. And, I, you know, okay, you can make your snide remarks about delays in travel and mechanicals. But but the fact that regularly hundreds, thousands yeah. of airplanes are taking off and landing across the world is, is frankly pretty incredible. We take it for granted. Absolutely. And, and this is the step to that happening for space. Yes, this hey guys, is, I'm this is that moment. mission control people to turn it down because I want to hear you. <laughs> hey, we're trying to do a live stream here. Yeah. <laughs> You I'm know, I get you're counting backwards, you, but I've got an inter- I've got a, a statuesque internet celebrity standing right next to me right now. You might have ten minutes. minutes there we go. Oh, there we go, Molly Wood. Hey, of Molly. <laughs> the sweatiest Molly Wood you ever. Saw. <laughs> oh yeah. Maybe. <laughs> God, I'd hate to be in a studio watching this. Really awful. Yeah. Oh, I'd much rather be getting eaten by birds. Than yeah. I'm out of here. Jeez, come on. Have some class, man. Finally, they've combined in, in a snide <laughs> yeah. Voltron. I could take it from one of you. They called us a snide Voltron. <laughs> Let me see if I can hear That's your comments. Cool. I know, totally. I need to hear these snotty comments about me. I mean, Molly is one of the most professional, most wonderful co-hosts I've ever worked with. You know, people are saying that, that there's always been uh, contractors with the government that have done the work, you know, for, sure. for NASA. And that is absolutely true. But, you know, on this scale, we've never really seen something. Like this is not just a branding change. Yeah. Where this is NASA doing all the same things they always do, but they put SpaceX on the on the front. I mean, this is this is a handoff. NASA wants to get out of having to do this. Yeah. And, and you know, now it's like, you know, the, the question is for, for some people is like, okay, well, what is the money making idea you know, where do you make money in space beyond government contracts for a company like spacex but it's like i think you would people said that about the internet you know well, this is, yeah i mean that the, the point is to to build the platform and, and expand into the area i mean you could you could say that about any kind of advancement any kind of any kind of science any kind of exploration uh you know why 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 go out on boats and try to find new new trade routes yeah because you think yeah, exactly. you're going to figure it out Mr. columbus what's the whole point of this enterprise <laughs> exactly uh now andrew uh, uh you know, I don't know whether we want to get into things. Brian is uh, inbound, should be on in the next couple of minutes. But uh, just for the live viewers, I mean, we might repeat some stuff here when we actually start the podcast. But uh, how do you, how do you, how would you describe the press area there? Uh, what, what is the excitement level? Well, I mean, the caveat is the press area, but you get a lot of people here when you do the social media stuff, uh, uh, which nice is you get some of the people who are probably a little bit more. Let's say less uh, stoic. Two sides of the same coin. Those, all those towers you see right there, those are the antenna mass for the satellite uplink trucks. Most of it's like you know local press, but they're going to for the larger areas there. We're on what's called the causeway, and this was the this is the stretch that goes from one island to the other. So you can see those are the antenna mass for doing the broadcast. They have further out, way out there in one of the distance, you'll see one of the buildings is the assembly you building. you take full screen? Seven minutes. What's that? 30 seconds and counting. No, no, we're, we're, we're uh, going to have you go full screen on the, on the live stream. Go ahead, just go ahead, Andrew. Oh, I lost you there. We're still with you, Andrew. Go ahead. Or not. Can we make sure that his connection goes bad as soon as we take him full screen? Great. Seven yes. Seven minutes. 30 seconds and counting, and Dragon is now operating on internal power. Well, we're waiting to bring Andrew back. Of course, we'll be joined by uh, Brian Brushwood uh, for this Weird Thing special, and of course, Tom Merritt, maybe periodic appearances by by uh, a sweaty Molly Wood in, in Cape Canaveral. But, uh, you know, just a really exciting, exciting time. I think when I was doing the... Mars thing uh, with you for the for the Twit coverage. Seven minutes. You know, I I'd, I'd made the comment that this is just such an exciting time to be in into space, and I think that there was a little bit of, you know, people. Uh, wow, the SpaceX feed looks gorgeous. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, you know, uh, like you know, for. 
for some people, you know, the idea being like, oh, well, this is the end of of NASA, and, and this is the end of you know the, uh, how much we care about space with the whole uh, you know the the funeral procession for Endeavor. For Endeavor, yeah. Uh, but I mean, I, I do believe, and this is, I mean, this is where my optimism when I when I said that comes from is, is events like this. Yeah, cutting the space shuttle. Uh, I, I definitely was was got angry about. Yeah, uh, especially because we had to rely on Russia to get our folks up to the International Space Station. But the plan was that private space would fill in the gas. This is the first step towards getting our own folks up from our own companies, which yes. to me, that's even more exciting because you have multiple companies doing it, finding more efficient ways to doing it, making it more regular. Yeah. So even if it's not a reusable space truck like the shuttle, uh, if we don't have to go to the Baikonur Cosmodrome every time we want to put something up there, that's good. Absolutely. Absolutely. And speaking of reusable, I mean, right now in, I believe the testing is going to be done in L.A., but they want to have the facility be in Texas. They are currently testing uh, and have successfully tested elements of a three-stage reusable rocket, SpaceX has, which is, uh, that would be another absolutely insane breakthrough. Yeah, I was reading, uh, I was doing some research for the chronology of tech history, uh, and I noticed that one of my entries said Cape Kennedy. And that's why I was like, wait a minute, I got to check on that because it's Cape Canaveral. I did not realize that it was renamed Cape Kennedy in the 60s uh -huh. uh, and then changed back to Cape Canaveral yeah. after, the, uh, after the Apollo missions were over. T -minus Actually, a little before that, I think. And it's very odd because very rarely do things get changed back. You know, maybe colloquially people yeah. stop referring to it. It's still the Kennedy Space Center. About 30 yes. seconds away from transferring Falcon 9 to internal power. T-minus five minutes. Uh, we trying to bring Andrew back? All of the uh, local news people turned on their iPhones and took all the bandwidth. Stage one, stage two, internal so, auto here we go. have started. So what you just missed is we just got this on air. Can you hear me, guys? Now yeah. yeah. To internal power. They just they just did this whole thing. Minutes, like you guys are out seconds. here, you accept the risks. There could be debris, tidal waves, whatever. Like, you know, it's basically like it's like this. You want to talk about the ULA, you, you know, ULA, whatever you say. How do you say EULA? EULA. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you, Molly Wood. So you <laughs> end all EULAs. Basically, if this rocket blows up and all that by us being, and we have no way out of here now. By the way, it's not like we can be like, oh no, I didn't know that, and then you know, ask Molly. EULAs aren't enforceable. Yeah, they're not enforceable. No. It's enforceable if we're dead. And if we're dead, okay. <laughs> that counts, actually. Yeah. All right. Well, so don't Justin die. Is my closest is my closest kin <laughs> would understand what that that would understand what this means. You know? Sure, I got you. I'm not going to say, but somebody was laughing at my mom. Mom's right now. I was laughing. That was adorable. I was not laughing. She's like, wow, you raised by chimps? I swear she said that. That was, that was a really good mom. <laughs> so, so now, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you, uh, from where you are, where's, where's the launch? Because we could see the SpaceX feed kind of in the upper left. I don't know if you can see my finger, but that's the, uh, that is the, the, the thing of hang right there. The, no the Millennium kidding. Falcon's wing, wing right there. Yes. Um, that's, it right there and so it's cool so this is we can actually see you know not we can see part of the gantry details absolutely all right here uh well andrew we are joined now by by brian so let's just for the podcast do a do a real quick uh intro and and this will be the podcast proper the earth is round and if you go fast go enough, oh, we're go for launch. We're go for launch. Which means that they're, they're go for launch. So we're waiting now. Hold on. A lot of approval has to go in here. So we two minutes. Or two minutes. Okay. <laughs> two minutes until launch. Ladies and gentlemen, we are two minutes until launch. This is the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Justin Robert Young in studio in Petaluma, California at the Twit Studios. Joining me live on the ground is Andrew Main. Andrew, uh, what, what is the, the feeling right now as you count down to this go for launch? We are T-minus two minutes. Well, I think there's a lot of relief for people here that they're not going to have to reschedule flights, um, I would say, first and foremost. Uh, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's exciting. I mean, this is really cool because this is like is probably, you know, one of the closest places it can be. Uh, of course, joining us, as always, is Brian Brushwood. Brian, how are you doing? 
Uh, oh my gosh, I'm so super excited about this. Now, when you say you're as close as you can be, how far off are you? Are we talking uh, miles or tens of miles? Uh, 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 how much can you see there? It looks 40 feet. We're 30 seconds and counting here, guys. All right, so. we are we are at 40 seconds. And also joining us, Tom Merritt. Tom, how you doing? Good. I can't wait to see us have private resupply of the International Space Station. And that is, of course, what's at stake. Uh, we are watching live as Andrew broadcasts to us. Uh, we also have uh, the, the SpaceX feed up here. But uh, I'll tell you what, I'll just let, let it go silent so we can hear things go on. 53 seconds. 53 seconds. Five for the tank. Commanded to start up. First stage engines chilled in. Play computers in auto idle. T minus one minute. Flight computers at startup. Flight computers now in control of the vehicle. Flight computer now controlling the vehicle at T minus 53 seconds. No Standing people. Standing by for the propellant tanks to flight pressure. So that feed you hear is about 15 seconds behind. And I was corrected. It's me, it's me every time. Wow. 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 Holy cow! I'm just going to do it just a quick pan so you can see how bright it is here. Wow. It's getting very loud now. Yeah. And again, for variety listeners, I mean, the, the descriptor from their point of view is just a sun. Very metal. It, yeah, it does. It looks it looks just like the corona of a sun going up into space. So, and we are off. I mean, this is a, a, what looks to be a successful launch, different than the initial test run where they did have to scrub the first attempt and then uh, came back three days later and successfully launched. This one goes off uh, on the initial run. And wow, I'll tell you what, you can see the HD feed from SpaceX. It just looks, looks gorgeous. Looks amazing. Andrew, did you feel any wind, any heat? Um... We wouldn't feel wind just yet. Uh, we're feeling the sound, so if there's going to be wind or heat, that's going to be in a little bit. Give us a little more time, I'll let you know. Um, we're still several miles away. But Now, what will happen is you see the glow up there, and it's, we've got more cloud cover than we had last time, so we're going to lose track of it more quickly. But when they do a separation, if we wait, we'll be able to see a bright thing come back down, which totally fooled Justin and I last time. Yes. We were we're like a couple of chimps trying to figure out this shiny, fiery object. About two and a half minutes into the flight, fifty-six miles high and traveling at ten times the speed of sound. Wow! Two of the first Mach engines 10. will shut down to reduce the rocket's acceleration, followed by the remaining seven engines. Now, the difference between this and the last flight is this has cargo, and it's gonna it's gonna dock and transfer the cargo, right? Yes, it's a functional flight, and this is part of the regular NASA manifest. Now, this is a you know, keeping the ISS in stock and a functioning space mission now. And the first one was a test one to see if it would work. And it did. And so now this is becomes it becomes routine in a way from here on out. I mean, nothing's ever routine when you go into space, but it certainly is a, uh, you know, exciting thing to think about that, you know, our capability in space has been officially, you know, changed now. Attention, and, uh, oh. All car passes need to stay in place until buses depart. Stop trying to drive closer. Yeah. Yes. And the, now there was cargo on the on the test flight, but it was non critical cargo. Do you know what's in yeah. this one? Uh, uh, my uh, the one of the the co broadcasters here explained that a lot of the equipment has to use do with uh, dealing with urine apparently. <laughs> 
Apparently bodily functions are a pretty big deal in space. Yeah, they would be. Yeah. They can land a man on the moon, but they can't stop you from peeing. <laughs> a lesson that we all have learned now on this a very special episode of Weird Things. It's all about pee. Yeah, Molly says it's all about pee now. It, uh... <laughs> Which, uh, for those of you uh, just listening now, the Molly that uh, Andrew is referring to is, in fact, uh, CNET's Molly Wood. Uh, who is also there uh, watching the SpaceX CBS launch? Now. CBS. Sorry, are we seeing a separation right now from the SpaceX? Feed? We're going to try to get a scoop at? on here. She says she may have taken the best photo ever, and so <laughs> separations <laughs> happening on SpaceX. Can you see anything, Andrew? Uh, right now, nothing because of the, the cloud cover. But we'll see. It would be all upon reentry or coming back down. Yeah, let's look at it. Don't get fooled. Yes. You see your photo? Oh, yeah, totally. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Wait, it's, it's, uh, it's this one. Let's see if it's, uh, it's getting too bright. But just the brightness from that image. I mean, it, it is... Looks like, like this one looks like I'm just taking a photo of the sun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks like, yeah. It it looks, like, yeah. That's yeah. unbelievable. This one has all the smoke at the bottom. Yeah. And the water. That's wonderful. Oh, my God. It's my permanent new wallpaper. <laughs> so one she of the a... things that... I'm sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 please. Go ahead, Brad. Well, I was going to say that one of the things that was uh, so important to us the last time we saw a SpaceX launch was that it meant a fundamental shift in the way we handle uh, space travel and, and resupply as far as uh, what is possible. Do you feel like in some ways this launch is even more important in that it's not... Uh, the possibility, but the realization of, of the fact, or is it a case where that it's uh, it's more of the same at this point? Oh, sorry, I lost you out there. Uh, I think I think you know, what what means this means now is that private space, uh, private space launch, private space enterprise, in, in sort of a very new way. And since we've seen, we have other companies have done sort of launch, pro, you know, provide launch services, but in this sort of a, in a radical new way. Uh, is a reliable part of our space program, and I think it will tend to make it bigger and capable of doing a lot more than we could have done before. Now, uh, just to keep everybody uh, in the loop on what is happening right now, uh, the, spa the Dragon spacecraft will launch a 1,000 pounds of cargo for astronauts living on the space station, and the crew plans to welcome the spacecraft this Wednesday, October 10th. So SpaceX, they usually provide live streams for this. I'm sure this will be no different. You can uh, make sure to tune in then to show uh, that landing, oh, or sorry, connecting, rather, docking with the International Space Station. Well, and I, I think it, it what they're walking is. Go ahead, go ahead Andrew. Oh no, they're walking back towards the buses, but I'm going to hang out by the bus as long as we can, so we can try and see the uh, the, you know, the, the the other stage. The separation of the stage. Well, I, I think what hit me the most yeah. is the fact that this this is them sending stuff that the International Space Station is relying on. And it's not like there's going to be a disaster if something mm -hmm. were not to work, uh, but they need this stuff. Like, this is not a test. This is not a, let's see if it works. This is, hey, this stuff needs to get up there, and we're relying on a private company, SpaceX, to bring it there. Now, now Brian, to your yeah, point... it's real, it's reliable. You know, uh, you mentioned, you know, is this more of the same? I think that there is, a, to me, a very, very exciting element of uh you know the kind of mundane element of this that like you know that yeah it's like yeah we're sending another rocket to the international space station like that's what we want to get to that's the goal that is really what changes everything and the fact that now we are looking at this there is a fundamental paradigm shift that even for fans of spacex and fans of space travel that now we are looking toward well, yes, this is going to succeed and go forward and will continue to yeah. evolve instead of kind of clenching up and hoping that this doesn't go wrong and set everything back 15 years. Right. Well, and also, uh, we have talked on Weird Things several times before about uh, the big news, of course, with this is the massive increase in efficiency. Uh, what was the last estimate that we were kicking around as far as uh, the dollar per pound that we're seeing on this uh, SpaceX flight versus what you were able to get on uh, the uh, the space shuttle? Well, remember that with a SpaceX flight for this particular, like, when you're doing a NASA, when you're basically doing a government mission, it's going to be different than if you were, you know, Martin Marriott or somebody trying to launch a satellite into space because you have to go through a lot more sort of government oversight and other controls like that. 
It's part of the space industry right behind me here. I'm not going to name names, but uh, <laughs> we can see faces. So uh, that is uh, Yuri Gagarin back being the famous Soviet cosmonaut. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. Drunk. Yeah. Very. Yeah. Uh, now this so, is a. Uh, yeah. I don't know what. Go ahead, Andrew. When? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So when you're doing a land mission, I mean, it's going to be different than when you're doing. You know, when you're just launching a telecommunication satellite, because. Anything done by the government's going to have everything to be in triplicate, so it's a different kind of cost thing than if you know you guys wanted to launch something. Uh, now, but we are certainly more to magnitude less than what it would cost to do a shuttle mission. Now, just to point out, uh, the Dragon capsule was designed for crewed missions, and they are currently looking to do, eventually, uh, crewed missions on the Falcon 9 rockets using the Dragon capsules, at least to go to the International Space Station. Uh, you know, this is, this is a, a, really, a, real, a real big deal. This, is, this particular launch is part of their, new, or their deal with NASA. I'm trying to find the dollar sign on it, but I believe it's one well, point. So what go ahead. So, yeah, what you have here is that the central crew capsule is going to be a, it's going to have a entry system. So at any stage from launch to orbit, it could be able to land by itself and basically provide a failsafe. Um, but the, the Falcon system itself, the launch capabilities, all that, and part of it, every time they do one of these launches, is going in towards building up reliability. By the time they put crew on one of these capsules or one of these rockets, they want to make sure that it's the most tested rocket in the history of aerospace, which when you look at the history of other, you know, space systems, when we were putting men on the Apollo, you know, we only had like two or three launches, you know, before that platform before we said, let's throw people on there. Falcon 9 is ac actually in orbit now. It just, uh, just... Uh, got the official crossover from from launch to orbit. Amazing, amazing. amazing. Yeah, it is a uh, one point six billion dollars to deliver twenty metric tons of supplies uh, from Earth to the International Space Station, uh, and that is a deal between NASA and SpaceX. There's also another uh, firm, Orbital Sciences, which has a one point nine billion dollar deal for station. Orbital Science Sciences. Yeah. And what would do, Andrew? Do you know what needs to be done uh, to make this ready for passengers to be able to to take crew up? The biggest thing is that you could have, according to Elon Musk, if you put inside of the the previous launches they've done, they would have had a nice trip. You didn't need to put a chair inside of there. But what they want to have to make it extremely safe, as safe as they can, is they want to have a rocket system built into the capsule itself. So at any stage when that rocket's taken off the capsule can separate and then land back on the platform that was a problem with the space shuttle there was no escape system on the space shuttle and you've got two solid rocket boosters attached to you that you can't shut off and solid rocket boosters you can't and so these you know the rockets already put an advantage but to make it safe enough by SpaceX standards, as safe as they want to make it. They want to get towards aviation level safety. They want to make it that at any point that they have, if they have to abort, that the top capsule can separate via rockets and then land safely. So that's going to be the biggest stage there for making that. Although you could put people in here right now if you wanted. Now, Andrew, just to dial it Windows, back to what yeah. we there's saw. There's a window in there. Yeah. Uh, to dial it back to what we saw tonight, and if, uh, uh, I, I know that there's usually uh, for, or there was last time for ISS launches, a I think a three second or a half, some infinitesimal amount of time window to launch. Uh, we heard before that it was a sixty percent chance of of good conditions. Uh, did, did you, uh, you know, what what did what were you guys told in terms of uh, the contingency plans for this? It got down to a 50% chance that they were going to be able to make the launch. Off to our, off to the west here, you could see thunder. You could actually see lightning lighting up clouds. So they had to make sure that you know there wasn't going to be a problem with that. But they got the window. At a certain point, they turned it over to the computers. And you know, at that point, once they get the weather okay, the humans make the decision if it's, the weather's okay. Then the computers go in there, and if there's a little bit of a hiccup or something like we saw the first time when they had a, I think it was a pressure gauge, didn't, you know, had to give them a reading that they didn't think was nominal, you know, it computer shut down the launch. Now, one interesting thing, the solar right we arrays just deployed. Uh, what did, can you explain what, oh, wow. the, what the solar arrays on Dragon do? 
So they, you know, when, you know, Dragon is a robot. It's basically a robot that's going to, you know, takes off from here. It's going to, you know, do, have to do some maneuvers and calculations to intercept the space station. When you look at the docking procedure, it's really elaborate. So there's a computers on there. There's a lot of hardware on there that has to make a lot of decisions and their power system and stuff. So the solar arrays are used to actually help recharge the systems to keep power to it, which, you know, give it a longer lifespan. And I don't know how critical they are to the function of it when you're launching to the ISS, but they want to build a platform that they can do a lot of things on there, that you could put instrumentation on there. You could actually, you know, send one of these into orbit by itself and do science missions within that capsule itself. So every time they send it up and they, they extend the solar arrays, one, it's a test to make sure they work. Two, you know, it actually can help supply our systems. And it looks like just after they uh, they opened the solar arrays, they started having some downlink problems. So it's, it's signals going in and out, uh, coming back to, to Earth anyway. Yeah. Stupid solar arrays. Yeah. And then, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's interesting when you hear about, you know, you have two, is it, you know, SpaceX privately, of course, and then it has to have built into it a number of NASA systems. When you want to, you know, dock a station, you have a guidance system that is designed to work with the ISS, which is, you know, a separate system that has to be put in, built into that. And there are a lot of little things when you're doing a launch with NASA. You, of course, have the NASA communication systems. And so it is an amazing technical achievement when you think about that, when you have, you know, your parties working together to make this stuff work. And uh, they just turned up the lights. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! This is what, what kind of live stream friendly press environment is SpaceX providing? <laughs> okay, whose who's bus are you riding? Okay. Uh, all right. Well, well, thank you to everybody guess, who is joining us. Driver wants to see. Uh, what, what you are yeah. joining us, if you're watching Twit right now, is a special live stream of uh, the Weird Things podcast. Me, Justin Robert Young, Andrew Maine, live in Cape Canaveral. Uh, Brian Brushwood and Tom Merritt is joining me here in studio. Uh, Andrew, right now, this is the most... <laughs> Uh, the most mysterious episode of weird things ever. As, as <laughs> well, always, yeah. Andrew Maines on a black dark bus. Yeah. Uh, the SpaceX capsule yeah. deployed the solar arrays and then lost the downlink, which is isn't necessarily disturbing. But we don't no. have any pictures to show you. Of sure. Because uh, now, yeah, now we no longer have both SpaceX's visuals oh, or Andrew's wait. visuals. Did you deploy your solar array, line. Andrew? I have, a, I have a live photo from space right now. <laughs> yes. There we go. <laughs> the deep dark expanse of space. Uh. So, so, so Brian, we're on, the, we're on the buses. I'm... Go ahead, Andrew. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I know you can say the, the little bit of background. I'm going to flip the camera for it so you can see. Um, we are, uh, so we're all loaded back under the buses. And now this is the long causeway. If anybody wants to go look on Google Earth or Google Maps, you can see a big, long stretch of, you know, uh, you know it's, it's a basically a you know, road going through the water. Um, connecting us to the rest of the NASA facility, and this is what we're on back now. And you can see these are the buses. I think they have uh, they do a limited number of people who come to the visitor center actually can get passes to come see the launch. Yeah, and so is that, that is that like a lottery system or can enjoy? Yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know if they're like congressmen's girlfriends or, <laughs> or, or campaign contributors from the NASA. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're the John Glenn Memorial bus, you know, bringing you live coverage of Andrew Maine personally trolling NASA employees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, uh, Brian, you know, obviously this is very, very exciting to us, but it does have farther reaching kind of implications. You know, if if you were to describe to somebody else who's not necessarily science inclined, what this means, what would you say? Uh, I, I mean, the, the, first and foremost, what we have is, uh, and, and uh, I mean, this is significant in that it's the first paid gig. It's the difference between sort of them being amateurs and finally going pro <laughs> with their first real gig, right? Uh, and, and that's significant, but what it means to the rest of us is that we're seeing the normalization of space travel, the fact that their stated goal is to reach a level of safety consistent with what we experience with air travel is nothing short of astonishing. I mean, think about, uh, has there been a single major airline fa uh, fatality in the last, what, half decade uh, in the United States? We, we, have, we see 
essentially a world where 737s are safer to ride in than, than your own car. And if we're going to see at an affordable level that kind of experience happening with commercial space travel, I mean, let's face it, we could say all we want about what this means for mankind. We could say what we want as, as far as uh, exploration. But at the heart of it, we're all 12-year-old kids right now thinking this is what's going to make it possible for me to see space in my lifetime. This is what is going to make it conceivable that 30 years from now I could save up for a few weeks and buy a ticket and go experience what it's like to be one of those pioneers half a century ago uh, in orbit around planet Earth. And I think that's the, uh, that's the real thing. If there's something you're going to take away from what, uh, what you're seeing here, is you're seeing uh, the normalization of space travel. Well, maybe you can save up in a few weeks one percenter. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were talking about this before the show, Brian, and I made the same airline analogy, which we take for granted now, uh, how difficult and complicated and dangerous airline travel can be just just from the physics of it forget the whole security issue and booking and delays and all of that just getting an airplane that big that heavy and uh, up in the air uh, as thousands of times a day is is an incredible test that we just think of as normal now and and was not that long ago that people got on a plane and they dressed up and they thought of it as a big occasion and they looked out the windows and like oh my gosh i'm seeing the earth from high up uh and and we're kind of on the cusp of that possibly happening with space and this is a step along the way or at least we can see what it would look like or what it will look like you we're know in the, we, the 1920s yeah. was to, to airline travel i think you know and then that is i think that that that's what's so uh fascinating about it and really I think conceptually it's really infinite of, of what we want to do past this, you know, like what, what's important to us. Is it space tourism? As, as Brian mentioned, is it, uh, you know, further explanation of the moon or possibly Mars? Is it something that we haven't really been able to think of conceptually in any kind of practical level because the idea of rockets regularly going into space wasn't, you know, what it could be or what it will be going forward. Uh, that's what I think is, is amazing is that now, you know, today we are, we can see that reality. We can it, see that platform and it pushes the edge out. It's no longer enough, uh, to, to explore and, and, and be, uh, be dramatic and praising, uh, of something going up into orbital space that becomes, yeah. that becomes regular. Uh, and, and now we're, we're like, we have to go out into the asteroid belt and into the moon and possibly Mars uh, if we want to push the boundary forward. Or even, I mean, like, look at like planetary resources, the idea of asteroid mining, you know, like that. It, that was an idea. They did a press conference. They have a, a company, uh, you know, that is that is, is a real thing based on the idea that this platform can and will be real. That's closer today than it was yesterday. And that's very exciting. <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, following. Hey guys, if you got me back here. Um, yes, uh, Andrew. Yeah, you are. You are now back live. Let me uh, let me throw a couple Twitter feeds to follow. Follow at NASA Social on Twitter, and you can keep up to date on a lot of the different stuff they're doing, which is kind of their most social media engaged stuff. So that's at NASA Social on Twitter. Uh, you want to follow that, of course, SpaceX, and then also just at NASA. You know, there's a lot of great things going on right now. You know, we've got. You know, we've got a uh, we've got a VW-sized vehicle on Mars right now doing some amazing science. And I thought it was a Mini all Cooper. All those speeds, I think. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, my wrong size. Yes, Mini Cooper size. So uh, by all means, you should you know subscribe to those Twitter's feeds, and I think you'll uh, you know it's a great way to keep what's going on. I think we're in the most exciting period of space exploration ever, and you know a big part of it you can follow by going to again at NASA social, and SpaceX, and just at NASA. Absolutely. And we would be remiss if we did not point out that NASA Social was the arm of NASA that put you on the buses that you're on now, that got you out there and, and made yeah. the visuals of this uh, possible. So uh, so thank you very, very, very much to them. Speaking of, of Twitter feeds, at Elon Musk, Falcon 9 rocket booster has delivered Dragon to its target orbit. That's a pretty sweet thing. That's a pretty sweet day at the office. How long are we looking at until we see the rendezvous with the International Space Station? It was a few days when on the test flight, wasn't it? Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday is when, uh, yeah, we hopefully uh, oh, will yeah. see. We'll see the docking. Hey, 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 guys, if I can pull uh, Jason with NASA Social on here, do you want to have any questions for him? Absolutely, sure. 
What? We got. We're on a, right now twitch.tv. So uh, let me uh, give you a here, but don't worry. It's, been, don't worry. So, uh, <laughs> it's perfectly safe. <laughs> perfectly hygienic. He's a Q-tip so freak. You can't see us, but I'll, sh- I'll show you this. Thing. We'll go back to the, uh, the, uh, the camera view. So this is Jason. Jason's the coordinator with... Uh, you want to give me your official job title? or? Yeah, guys. Hi. I, I'm Jason. I'm, I'm, I'm NASA's deputy social media manager. So... Okay, well, uh, Jason, I guess the first question I would ask, uh, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, the first question that I would ask uh, for you is, what kind of interest did you see in people wanting to cover this, and was it more or less than you've seen on other uh, other launches? Well, each mission that we've uh, done something related to social media at has been uh, kind of unique and different in that different uh, missions have had different levels of interest. Obviously, as we approach the, the end of the shuttle ramp, uh, leading up to that final shuttle mission, it's on our social media, you know, uh, anticipation and everything was off the charts for that, and it kept growing with each mission in that lead up and everything. But then we also had, you know, things like uh, the Curiosity rover and everything, and when we went and landed on Mars and so on, I mean, we had 2,500 people apply to uh, be at JPL covering the event on social media, and uh, we ended up having 25 spaces available um, and we, it really, it broke my heart literally to turn down so many people who were so interested in, you know, promoting science and, and technology and engineering and math and everything we've got going on with the space and, and everything. And so uh, it, it's been incredible interest. Um, for this particular mission, uh, we had um, way more qualified applicants than we had space for, and so uh, you know we're extremely uh, cognizant of the fact that you know there's so much interest out there. We really do wish we could get everybody in and, and give them a wonderful experience, but uh, you know we, we've got to work within the budget and the uh, resources that we have, and, and so uh, you know look for us next time. Hey, Jason, tell them what that bright building is that we're heading towards. I, I don't know if you guys can see it here, but there's a, a building up here that's called the Vehicle Assembly Building. It's um, pretty much the largest building here at Kennedy Space Center, and uh, it's where they do all the rocket stacking. Uh, they stacked all the shuttles in there, and it goes back to the Apollo days, and they also uh, stacked the Saturn V rockets in there. So wow. It's, the it, it's pretty, pretty large. So it, I, <laughs> if memory serves me correctly, it's about 55 stories tall, and um, it, it has huge cranes that can handle, you know, hundreds and hundreds of tons of weight in order to move, you know, large objects around in there and everything. It's an incredible experience. And right now it is open to the public. So if you come and visit at the visitor complex here, you can get on one of the tours that will take you out here and you can go inside the vehicle assembly building right now. So, so Jason, uh, <laughs> so, uh, Jason, as an outside observer, it seems like the last uh, few uh, actions that, that NASA has taken have been extraordinarily social media savvy. Obviously, with the, uh, with the recent launch to Mars, we saw, you know, we saw a theatrical-style trailer. We have live tweeting from you know, the, the, the rover itself. Uh, how much of that is, has – where did the decision – to, to pay more attention to social media come from? Because it obviously seems to be paying out big dividends for you guys as far as publicity and goodwill. Uh, but I'm curious, like, how that decision came down. Sure. So the foundation for why we do what we do actually goes all the way back to 1958 uh, with the National Aeronautics and Space Act, which one of the things that when the agency was founded that we were charged with doing was uh, disseminating what, exactly what we do, our activities and the results thereof, to the widest practical audience as possible. And so that's been our one of our main elements that is required of us by law to do right from day one. And so, you know, as social media began to you know reach that kind of um, critical point, critical mass, and had a lot of uh, new audiences basically talking about us, whether we were there or not, we really realized this was a great opportunity to expand into and you know it, it, it's social media today it might be something over you know we we can find traction on you know sharing as much information as we can with people we're going to go there too so whatever the next uh, new platform is or the new tool or things like that we're, we're going to you know try to continue to figure out ways to uh, get as much information out there to as many people as possible so uh, Jason, for you guys with the social media team, uh, what what do you consider the greatest benefit of reaching out? The greatest benefit? I think that something that's interesting is that there's a lot of folks who I would call um, kind of, you know, armchair space enthusiasts, where uh, they, they are at home and they're not really connected to one another initially. 
And by bringing together kind of a community of um, space fanatics who absolutely love what, we, what we're up to and really want to know more information, you know, we can kind of put them all together and connect the dots for folks to get them connected in a, a community of um, other space followers. And that really has been very valuable as far as, you know, people finding out that they're not the only ones, they're not alone, and so, that uh, you know, kind of harnessing that community power to, um, you know, go out there and spread the, the word uh, to new audiences and new places that, you know, NASA on its own could never reach. So it, it's been an incredible experience. Uh, this is Tom here, Jason. One thing that I've noticed that impresses me is how many crew actually will go onto Twitter and, and seemingly enthusiastically tweet. They're writing it themselves. It's obvious. Uh, why do you think it is that, that, that crew in the, don't see this as just kind of drudgery, but, but they seem to really enjoy reaching out to the fans? Well, I mean, one of the things that, you know, we've always heard from folks who um, who are the astronauts and things like that, and, and also our scientists and our engineers and other members of our workforce, is that they're extremely passionate about what they do. They love their jobs, and, and they realize that they have a really awesome job. And so, for the most part, you know, it doesn't take a lot of convincing to convince folks to, hey, maybe you should get on Twitter, or maybe you should, you know, hop on a Google Plus Hangout with us, or things like that, and uh, really go out there and uh, share what you're experiencing and the privilege you have to do the job that you're doing um, and, and share that with as many people as possible. And so it's pretty easy to uh, figure out um, and, and convince folks to, to get online and, and really share with us what's going on. So it, it's an incredible opportunity. And I think a lot of folks realize that uh, the astronauts have enthusiastically adopted it and everything. And so we, we hope that everybody's following along. All right, uh, Jason, it looks like you guys are, are getting to where you need to go. Uh, if you could just uh, let Indeed. us... Let let, let, let people know where to follow and uh, what you guys have coming up if they want to apply. Sure. So uh, we've always got new opportunities. The easiest place to follow everything that NASA has going on, we've got over 400 accounts, is by going to nasa.gov slash connect, and that'll get you hooked up with all of our accounts. But uh, our main feeds are at NASA and at NASA Social. And so as we have new events and everything going on, you know, we'll put announcements up on at NASA Social. So keep following and uh, follow along for the next opportunities. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Yeah, Jason uh, with NASA Social. Again, yeah, uh, good reporting you're doing. The reason why Andrew Maine uh, was as close as he was uh, to this launch was the National's NASA Social Program. So everybody head on over, nasa.gov slash connect. They do a great job with uh, outreach in all kinds of areas with NASA. Uh, it's pretty impressive for... Uh, 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 they wouldn't necessarily have a natural motivation to do this, but I think he hit on it, which is these people are really excited about space. They're excited about yeah. astrophysics. Now, you know, if you if you subscribe to the uh, This Week in NASA podcast, uh -huh. you get all kinds of different voices from all different people uh, providing the segments. Uh, they do a lot of interviews with employees, talking to them about outreach and and the importance of what they work. They talk to the to the folks that are in the teams that are working on things, not just on the, the pretty faces, you know, the, the, the really exciting, the Elon Musks or the astronauts. Sure. Uh, and and I, that's why I love subscribing to that, because you get a real good inside look. Well, I, I think there's also a it's, it's a smart move on their part, because I think it's a it's a necessary response to uh, the, the real restructuring of the NASA budget that we've seen. Obviously, at the height of the Cold War and the space race, you didn't need to have a Twitter uh, feed to to remind people to get excited about what they're up to. But nowadays, you know, they're a leaner, uh, more uh, science focused, uh, you know, institution. And that's part of the reason that they need to uh, they need to remind people why they should be excited about their next next mission. Now, Andrew, where are you walking now? OK, so right now there's a, uh, a press facility which, and it's really awesome, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pan over here, we'll see what we can see in the, uh, uh, in this light, because I don't get run over. So when you watch the old space launches, you know, all the Apollo missions, all that stuff, these were covered largely from right here, okay? There's right in that light in the distance, you'll see there, there's actually broadcasters on top of a platform doing a broadcast. As I pan over here, there's a CBS building, there's a press building, and so there's like the, you know, this is kind of like sort of old school NASA. That building that Jason mentioned right over here, I mean, that's that huge, huge, huge thing where they put the space shuttle together. Uh, I geeked out because, like, over there, there's, like, just a giant, like, mechanism for carrying rockets around. <laughs> so just about anything awesome you ever saw. I mean, standing right here is where the cameras were when the Apollo spacecraft took off. 
when, you know, man's, you know, the American exploration of space took place, the coverage came from just this right area here. There's a launch countdown clock, which I'm going to walk towards so we can see, um, just so you can see that. That's the, uh, where they would cover that. And there's a lot of the, the vehicles here that would, you know, the news vehicles that would do that. Um, and then you would get, you know, your, your broadcasters and stuff and your internet celebrities standing over there uh-huh. checking their Twitter feed. <laughs> <laughs> The camera's kind of big. Um, and then, so this is the launch clock. I'm going to walk up over close here to see that. Uh, it's pretty rad because of the fact that, you know, there's the palm trees up above here. But when you talk about history, when you talk about, you know, we've got a 50-year history now. 50-year uh, history, actually, this is the 2012 is the 50-year anniversary of the Cape Canaveral complex, which we then named, you know, the Kennedy complex. A um, lot of history here. I mean, just, just so much awesome stuff's taking place here. You had Vandenberg, which did a lot of the launches, but in the background here, I'm going to see if I can walk a little closer. This is our local news truck. Um, that, you're not going to, you know, obviously on this phone, it's going to be kind of tiny, but that glowing thing you see back there is the clock, and that is now 34 minutes, 40 seconds. That's from the time of liftoff now, so it keeps counting. So it's the count up instead of the count down. Yeah. Uh, and that's how long. By the way, I mean, that, just yeah. to give you a, a sense of time, you know, that, that this podcast has been going <laughs> in, in that time, it's in it's it's separated. It's now in orbit. Like, you know, that's that's how quickly this goes from uh, the east coast of Florida, the space coast of Florida to space. <laughs> and then and why does it take? Uh, so many orbits to uh, get itself to where it could dock with the ISS. Do you know the answer to that, Andrew? I don't have an intelligent answer to that, but uh, <laughs> part of it, part of what that has to do is remember it needs to match the speed of the ISS, and to match that speed can be either accelerating or decelerating because you're talking about you know when you're in orbit you're going over twenty thousand miles per hour. Okay, you're going extremely fast, and in order to have two, it's two bullets trying to dock. And, you know, and it takes time to make orbital corrections to get to that point where you're able to do that. And when it, you know, doing multiple orbits and part of before they do the docking, too, is they'll have they'll reach way before they do the docking a, uh, a synchronous orbit. But they want to, you know, basically go through a system of tests, because if that thing heads at the ISS too fast, it's a missile. So, yeah, that's a big part of it. Wow. It's, just, it's such an amazing thing. And like it like. Well, we've been talking about it. Obviously, we've, we've made a lot of equivalencies to uh, commercial air travel. But, you know, when you think about that, it, it's incredibly complex. You know, yeah. when you break down uh, exactly what we've done in terms of moving things from, from one place to another, it, it seems mundane now. And the idea that this is becoming mundane is just amazing. It, it just feels like, like achievement unlocked. You know, <laughs> like, like we've, we've crossed, we've, we've gained enough XP and we've leveled up to the point where now we can just shoot rockets into space, you know. They've got a they've got a model of the Mars Curiosity rover here. I'm going to pan over so you guys can see it. All <laughs> right. All right. A little prop comedy here on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. As so what looks it's to be a Mini staged. Cooper. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> I I uh when you're talking about the uh, equivalency to, to airplanes, too, I, it made me start to wonder what sub developments we may see when this becomes regular. If we have a dozen companies who are supplying uh, International Space Station, if we have private satellites become common uh, and 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 occupied satellites, space hotels, all kinds of things uh, that could be developed. Are there, I mean, if, if we're putting on our speculation hat, if we're just going to make wild predictions, uh, uh, which one, never happens here on the show. Well, I was just, <laughs> yes, before, Brian, thing. if I could just finish real quick, what I was going to say is, will we be able to like take a suborbital rocket to Beijing from San Francisco? Will that become cost effective rather than taking a long airplane flight? Uh, There's number a company, one, I absolutely, think, called yes, Jinx because working on we, that. one of the things we were talking about is uh, with the the idea the idea of a three stage completely reusable rocket the fact that each of the stage uh we uh i I believe andrew crunched the numbers and figured out that you're now looking at the cost just of fuel a 737 and obviously uh certainly for the rich that will be the uh, the go-to way to get around is by uh by by multi-stage reusable rocket 
But uh, but uh, to me, the big surprise that I'm looking forward to is as we see a future where not only are payloads, private payloads, able to get up into space, but more importantly, private experiments are able to be run in space. And I look forward to the day when some enterprising high school puts together enough money that they're able to get a uh, particular uh, experiments funded in zero G to make some kind of significant discovery and scoop the entire scientific establishment because oftentimes that's how these things happen is once you have this complete decentralization of power you get people who waste their own money on not on on nutty things they want to try and discover uh you know these these important technological leaps that moves society forward right because right now high schools do experiments all the time it's there's a program for it but they're experiments that are carefully approved and vetted and and generally not groundbreaking research what you're talking about is more interesting which is somebody's like yeah i don't need anybody's approval to do this i'm gonna just gonna try it see what happens what brian what brian's really talking about is space meth that is his point (laughs) (laughs) i think i think i'm looking forward to the day when a high school can hold their prom in space so they can dance instead of letting the stodgy town uh, disallow it. <laughs> Nobody puts SpaceX in a corner. <laughs> hey, uh, gentlemen, I am going to end my part here so I can go into the briefing thing. I don't know if they'll you know, be happy with me. Live streaming? Or not, but yes. So, uh, what happened to freedom of the press? Oh, no, I'll go in there. Let's, let's, let's take a look in there. All right. Let's, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. We can understand if you don't talk. Yeah. In fact, many might find it to be a pleasing experience. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Especially now that he can't now answer you. Nice. Yeah. Have you ever had anything you ever wanted to tell Andrew May? Now's the time. Exactly. Uh, oh, so now, for those of you listening to this on audio, this is uh, a shot of uh, Andrew going in. This is the briefing area here for NASA. All sorts of uh, models, uh, video footage of the SpaceX launch. Uh, I do know that Elon Musk is in Canaveral. I don't know if he is going to be a part of this particular press briefing that is happening right now. Uh, but again, 40 minutes. In 40 minutes from the point of this uh, launch, this thing is now in orbit, well on its way to the International Space Station, and uh, with they're sitting down to talk about it. Just fascinating. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we're not going to hear anything just yet. They're getting ready. No, yeah, they're they're getting ready. Although Andrew, is, Andrew seems to be hitting the snack table. Of course, Andrew, Andrew. It's been only uh, an hour or so since Andrew's had a press pass, and he's always uh, he's already uh, picked up on the best part of being a credentialed member of the understand. media. The spread. Second you problem to campaign Justin. finance reform. Let me tell These you about chips. the man's exploration of space, guys. <laughs> Chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> so, folks, there's how no- much is that chocolate chip cookie costing Elon Musk right now? <laughs> That's well, that, well, uh, they were able to get this for fifty dollars. NASA was paying three thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Already, now, the efficiencies are made apparent. Of course, absolutely. Whereas now that Andrew is off a bus with NASA people within <laughs> earshot, we're we're right back to the overrun jokes. <laughs> As soon as I step off, yeah, my, my pass is getting revoked. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, can you come with us, please? <laughs> Amazing. Andrew uh, Maine, we know no Andrew Maine that was ever here. Now, obviously, uh, th- these are members of the press. They are meant to be impartial. But, uh, you know, is, is there a sense of excitement amongst the people that, that covered it, or at least uh, some of these social uh, people that, like, like you that were brought in by NASA Social? I certainly see enthusiasm. I mean, I may even talking to you guys, so I don't know. I, I, I could I could take a, a read of people here, but then I might get kicked out. But uh, uh, you know, you get a lot of. I think the story is growing. I'll put it that way. I think that you know, we get you know, mission after mission, is people kind of you know we're coming down from okay, you know, we've no longer have the space shuttle capability, and now we're trying to look at what does NASA do now. And so I think the, the certainly the attention there is now changing into focus. Between this, there'll be the orbital sciences and stuff. And so, um, you know, Justin, you're more familiar with these sort of press briefings than I am, so I would not know how to gauge any of that. <laughs> uh, well, if, if anybody has any reaction, that means they're very excited. <laughs> <laughs> if, if they're not looking like it's a really boring job, then they're thrilled. Mm-hmm. And usually you can tell the excitement of, of, of the press corps based on how much food there is. Mm. 
they're um, they're doing a pretty good job of working their way through it. Uh, <laughs> hey guys, I'd hate to do this, but unfortunately, I'm I'm actually not at home, and I've got to I've got to actually bolt. But uh, this was awesome. I'm so thrilled that I made it back in front of a computer just in time to see this. Uh, I can only imagine what it must have been like to be standing there as suddenly night turns into day and then the sun just flies away into the night. That's got to be awesome. Hey, Brian, make me a promise here. Make everybody a promise, okay? Okay. That when they do the Falcon Heavy launch, which should be at Vandenberg next year, yes. you, will move heaven and, you will move heaven and hell to do your best to come out there and see that with me and Justin. Oh and my Tom. God! This is, you know what this is right here? You see that in your face? That's my pinky. And if you thought it was something All else, right. shame on you. That's me <laughs> giving a pinky promise to do the best I can because that would be freaking amazing. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what. Maybe uh, they're launching a heavy. Oh yeah, Falcon Heavy. All right. It's a big deal. Uh, Largest rocket since Saturn, Tom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, what, what is so the next the next SpaceX uh, launch, Andrew? What is that? Um, the next SpaceX launch, I don't know. There's going to be the Orbital Sciences launch coming up, but I don't know when that is. Um, I'm going to show you something cool. There's a poster in back here. I'm going to see if we can't I'll explain it because I don't know if we'll quite be able to see that. But it, it is a. Uh, it's great to kind of see the poster here, and it's a. It shows an astronaut, and it says, uh, "Same crew, new ride, commercial crew." And oh, cool. kind of the idea here is, you know, the idea there is that the you know the mission continues, you know that. You know, how you get there may change, but the idea of it's about the people. It's about getting people into space. It's about discovery, which is you know, a great attitude here. And that's, and that's all that's really uh, important. Um, all well, right, guys, I'm, 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 I got to run. I'll yeah. catch you guys. See you later. Uh, back to normal next week. See you guys. Absolutely. From his secret location deep beneath the earth, Brian Brushman, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, you know, I'll tell you what, Andrew, do you want to, do you want to hang on and see, uh, if we can capture the, uh, the, the press briefing? Do we have any idea on how long that might be? Well, I think, I don't know, but I think if you want to do that, that, you know, the NASA feed will have a better, the better way to do that. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just real quick here. There's a great model in here of the international space station, which is the destination. And the thing that gets forgotten often is how big this thing is. This is just a model, real thing, larger than a football field. Look at a football field. This thing is bigger, okay? That's up in space. It's a real thing. I mean, we, we are a space civilization right now. We have people living there. We're doing work on Mars. And, you know, this is an important kind of thing in that regard to remember. I built one little piece at a time. Like, I remember when they launched in the yeah. late 90s, the, you know, the first little can that went up there. Yeah. And they kind of had to, it was a dual purpose thing. And now it's like a storage locker, that, that, that first yeah. piece that they lived in. Absolutely. Yeah, kind of. Kind of like a vacation cabin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that is that is fantastic. Uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll tell you. We'll, we'll start to uh, to wrap things up uh, here. Uh, Andrew, any any final thoughts on on this entire launch and uh, you know what it means? I, uh, I I think you know we we you know the 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 word of the day is that now you know space is in business. You know it, it went from being you know Elon Musk just about a decade ago had a crazy idea that he could make a difference in space exploration and give us capabilities we didn't have before and he did that and you know that's how these things start you know people with ideas and how to make it happen and nasa more than willing to adjust to times and to adapt and to take use of you know good ideas and good technology has has certainly met the challenge of that and you know we're we're in a much better place than we were five or six years ago where we had no idea what the future of you know, space exploration as a whole would go into, you know, and, and not just American space, but space in general. And that, you know, most of the technology we had was Cold War technology driven by militarization, where now we have space technology driven by a very, very hopeful idea that we will live in space, that will be a space civilization. And that's exciting. Absolutely. Uh, Tom, final thoughts? Yeah, I just, you know, really excited about all kinds of things in space. I've been a fan ever since I was a little kid, uh, you know, watching the Soyuz mission uh, where the Apollo Soyuz folks linked up yeah. and shook hands in space. That's the earliest memory I have of covering this stuff. And it never gets old uh, seeing a rocket launch off of the ground uh, and go up into the heavens and know that it's it's actually up there and it's orbiting and there's people up there and just kind of bringing that whole reminder here is great. The extra 
added sort of meta narrative here is that we're going to have more people with more opportunities to do this. And that's really exciting. Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. Like, like you said very, very well, it never gets old, but hopefully through us doing it constantly and cheaply and reliably, <laughs> one day it will. And that will be a beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, all right. Well, I'll tell you, we're going to wrap up uh, the Weird Things podcast. I'm Justin Robert Young. Thanks, of course, uh, to our regular crew, Brian Brushwood and Andrew Main, And, of course, our special guest, Tom Merritt. Thanks uh, to Leo Laporte and uh, Lisa Kensel for letting us borrow the Twit Studio and the live stream for the evening. And, of course... Jammer B, our technical director here, who has done a fantastic job of not only coordinating all the Skype stuff, but also switching in between the audio feeds for uh, NASA and SpaceX. Uh, I think we might stay on the stream for a little bit longer, but uh, Andrew, would you like to do the honors of ending the episode? Hey, thank you, everybody. It's been weird. All right. Well, uh, yeah, Andrew, I'll tell you what, if, if, uh, if, uh, you want to, uh, if you want to go ahead and, and uh, watch the, uh, the conference, uh, you can feel free to, uh, to do that. Uh, I do, I just saw here on the SpaceX feed that it will be, uh, SpaceX president Gwen Shotwell and NASA administrator Charlie Bolden. Oh, Charlie Bolden's Uh, there. speaking Excellent. in the next, uh, six minutes or so. So, okay, uh, yeah. Some interesting things to tell us about what just happened and uh, the, the future of this program. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Absolutely. Thank you again to, right. uh, to Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. And, of course, hey, thank you guys. if you guys would like to watch that, it is uh, SpaceX.com slash webcast that you can see that press conference. Charlie Bolden's going to get up and go, look, this saves me a lot of money from my budget. So <laughs> a big lot. thanks to wow. SpaceX. You don't even know. You're like, you want to guess? You want to guess how much? <laughs> Keep going. Actually, it's public record and it's a line <laughs> item. But but go ahead, make a guess. Thank you. Uh, uh, this, this is out of uh, right now. They're in Petaluma, California. It's uh, Twit TV. Hey, hi. Thumbs up. We're we're in space now. Yeah, I know. Congratulations. That was a fantastic launch. It really was. Wasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, it was louder than any shuttle launch. It was like the deleted watched. scenes of might the podcast. Been, if the ads a little closer. Yeah. And and the wind might have helped or something. Uh, but I was, I was watching the uh, well, 134 from the causeway, and I didn't get that. Right, right. Uh, yeah, it felt this. It felt, yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Absolutely. Letter perfect. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Cheers, uh, California. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, Florida. Cheers. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, I am tuning out. Thank you so much. All right, buddy. Adios. Yeah. Uh, so, boom. Big success. Here comes the boom. <laughs> Opening. <laughs> Sorry, <soon>. Kevin James. <laughs> Theaters everywhere. Go see it. It's worth a shot. Uh, who owns that? I do. <laughs> don't say it. Yeah. <laughs> don't you don't say it. Um, yeah. So, there we go. Yeah, man, I'll tell you what; these that are fun. Cool. These Sunday uh, space launches, Sunday space, yeah, S no space Sunday. I can't. Yeah, nothing except space <laughs> well, Sunday works. Tom, Tom, and the jerks. Spun day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you everybody uh, for for tuning in. If you want to go ahead and watch, uh, it should be in four minutes time. SpaceX dot com slash webcast. And and again, listen, I can't thank uh, you know Leo and Lisa enough for for making this happen, and Jammer B for sparing his time. Uh, to uh, to help us put all this together, uh, Tom. I mean, whatever. But you know, everybody else. Now, believe me. Thank you. I would like to thank space for having multiple dimensions <laughs> in which we can move about and explore you. There space, we, we are in you. We yes. There we go. Finally, we want to make it so mundane that we can tritely uh, tweet from space. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's funny. Uh, when you're like when you were saying like, hopefully someday space travel will become mundane. That. I don't know if I'm old and if I'm so old that that will never happen or not because it, I I know my grandparents were just like air travel like yeah. until the end of the end of their days like I just can't it's crazy well you know but it would be like if a dragon showed up you know like a dragon space capsule like let's say theoretically that a scaly like Daenerys Targaryen style dragon right. just showed up. You would never maybe get used to the fact it would always be spectacular that a sure. dragon existed. But eventually you'd be like, Well, oh, the village is burned. I mean it's a dragon. What do you gotta do? Yeah, huh, <laughs> dragon. Stay away from the dragon next time. Maybe right. it won't get burned. 
uh, you know, it'll just be a world that we live in, no matter how fantastical the element uh, that it is. And, you know, that's like, again, like we have another, not only just another launch, another company that's going to be putting up uh, a rocket with in, in orbital sciences, which is just, just amazing. Just amazing to look at. Well done, SpaceX. There we go. So Elon Musk uh, and and all the team there at uh, at SpaceX, cheers to you. This is uh, Justin and Tom from Petaluma signing off. Okay, now the real post show begins. Exactly. Where I go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> It's getting real here, folks. <laughs> not, not live on the stream. Hey, thanks, you guys. I'm glad you enjoyed it.